In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, hello and welcome to Peer Home with me, Sahar Hakshu. Well, before we begin, we'd like to offer our congratulations on the auspicious occasion of the birth anniversary of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, the sixth infallible Shia Imam, peace be upon him, Imam Jafar al-Sadiq. Um, so on that note, it's only befitting that today we continue our discussion that we began two weeks ago about love, the psychology of love and its implications. And of course, we'll have other segments to our program. We'll have from here and there a report, a story, much, much more. So you'll definitely want to stay tuned to today's Pure Home. Welcome back to the program. Well, we're delighted and honored to have back with us uh, Dr. Sayyid Mohsen Fatimi to speak about love. Uh, hello and welcome to the program. Hello. Uh, Dr. Sayyid Mohsen Fatimi has done his postdoctoral studies in the Department of Psychology uh, at Harvard University. He also teaches in the D Department of Psychology at Harvard. He teaches at the University of Massachusetts in Boston and uh, the Boston Graduate School of Psychoanalysis and Western Washington University. He's also a registered psychologist and a keynote speaker at a number of international congresses as well as a published author. He's also part of the advisory and editorial board of the American Psychological Association Encyclopedia of Critical Psychology. Uh, so uh, it's wonderful to have you back with us and uh, if our viewers tuned in about two weeks ago we spoke about the psychology of love and uh, today is a continuation of uh, that um, episode that we had on love. And um, so let's start off I, I guess if you want with the power of love or maybe just a brief recap of what we talked about last time just to get everyone else up to mm. pace. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'd like to uh, extend my felicitations and congratulations to you and the dear viewers on Thank the uh, special occasions for today, the birth anniversary of uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad uh, peace be upon him and Imam Sadiq peace be upon him. And I think that this is going to give us um, a great preamble for discussing and uh, explaining about the power mm -hmm. of love. Since uh, Prophet Muhammad is the manifestation of love, uh, he is um, well known as the prophet of love and peace. Understanding Prophet Muhammad uh, epistemologically and ontologically helps us understand how Prophet Muhammad can be the harbinger of love and peace. Um, and one of the things that he has done um, right from the beginning of his ordainment is to provide people with that sense of security and love internally so that you, they can offer to people around themselves mm -hmm. the power of love. This philosophically and psychologically helps us understand how the beginning, the emergence of love from within yourself uh, would help you understand the power of love in your intrapersonal and interpersonal relationships. Prophet Muhammad began with love. He was uh, the manifestation, the, the crystallization of love in his behavior and performance. Examples are when Prophet uh, Muhammad was walking down the avenues or something, he was walking as modest as possible. Mm -hmm. He never turned down anyone's gift or something. Uh, even though that was like um, a spoiled date or something, 
or he was never downgrading, he was uh, never uh, taking upon himself to put anybody down or he was never ever condescending. Mm -hmm. He was the manifestation of decent principles of behavior and performance. The same holds true for Imam Sadiq, for example, who was uh, helping people in an anonymous manner uh, deep down the nights when everybody was sleeping. He was transferring the baggage and the package of uh, help and assistance without even mentioning who he was. And uh, Prophet Muhammad himself, in terms of his uh, performance and behavior, was uh, the epitome of love mm -hmm. in terms of his transactions uh, and um, interactions with people. He was always uh, the first person to offer salam and greetings. Nobody could ever exceed him or supersede him in terms of offering salam and salutations. And I he think was it's interesting for a lot of us because um, considering the position that he had, uh, he had all this humbleness, all this modesty, and, uh, exactly. and still so much love. And uh, to confirm and um, corroborate what you were saying, uh, there was an occasion that people were present for congregational prayer and they found out that the Prophet was late and they were surprised. Mm -hmm. So they were just trying to find out where the Prophet was and then they, they you know, sort of tracked him down and they found out that he was playing with uh, a number of kids. Mm -hmm. Now the truth of the matter was that the kids had come across Prophet on his way to Masjid or Mosque and they had asked him to play with them and Prophet honestly and openly and benevolently mm -hmm. uh, and candidly accepted this without saying that, well, how would you dare I'm a prophet, you're the kids. You know, nobody, uh, when you see the historic records of Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. you could always see that Prophet was never, ever downgrading in terms of I'm the prophet, you are sort of inferior or something. Mm -hmm. So he was the manifestation of true love. Uh, people always, constantly, and I'm just using the frequency ad always because uh, the historic record is rife and brim with all these manifestations that he was always uh, smiling. He had mm -hmm. always a smile on his complexion. And therefore, uh, when people bumped into him, they, they could find him, they could always find him in a state of composure, in a mm -hmm. state of tranquility. And he was um, the forerunner of love, of kindness, of benevolence, of uh, the magnitude of um, infinite possibilities of human kindness and love. Uh, you may have heard and um, um, remember that there have been a number of occasions where those people who did not embrace the doctrine of Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. on purpose they tried to make fun of him some of them mm -hmm. did some indecent acts like throwing garbage or something mm -hmm. against disrespect. Prophet and the uh, demonstration of different aspects of disrespect mm -hmm. and uh, in a number of occasions when those guys got sick or something Prophet Muhammad took it upon himself mm -hmm. to uh, drop in their house to just um, Prophet brought up, you know, those people, gifts or something, and those people were, you know, shocked by this surprising mm -hmm. form of performance, and they just said, well, I can't say anything except um, saying that I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, or there is no Prophet, uh, you know, that, that Prophet, I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. real messenger of God, mm -hmm. in order to somehow compensate that sort of uh, disrespect or something, because it was of such a tremendous... Um, you know, a positive impact in mm -hmm. terms of they were radically transformed because of what the Prophet um, was um, calling upon mm -hmm. in terms of his action and, and his uh, deeds. I mean, um, I, I think that would probably all go back to, I think we, we touched on this last week too, uh, the love for the Creator and being in sync and in connection to the one God yeah. and uh, the, omnis the omnipotent God. And I think that's why he's showing all this love. Well, thank you for uh, raising this issue because this helps us understand there is a hadith that uh, uh, indicates that the first light was created uh, from the Prophet. Mm -hmm. So, Allah nuri, which means that the first thing that God created was the light, was the illumination of Prophet Muhammad. So this philosophically demonstrates that Prophet Muhammad's ontological existence has got priority, has got uh, some sort of um, hierarchical priority in terms of the essence of existence mm -hmm. to any other thing, including wisdom. Mm -hmm. So wisdom is going to stand second in terms of the hierarchy of the ontology of the Prophet's existence. Therefore, this suggests, philosophically speaking, based on this hadith and the doctrine that is embedded within that, that everything, including those stones, everything around us, plants, all of them, are 
necessarily in dire need of mm -hmm. uh, getting connected to Prophet Muhammad's likeness. Mm -hmm. So uh, even other prophets like Jesus or something, they come later in terms of the existential hierarchical mm -hmm. ontology. So Prophet Muhammad um, is the mediator of grace, mm -hmm. is the mediator of grace between all objects, all forms of existence, and God. Mm -hmm. uh, he facilitates uh, through his light, through his ontological connectedness, mm -hmm. any sort of uh, connectedness to God. So therefore, when we say, for example, salawat, mm -hmm. uh, we are uh, practically and deeply getting ourselves connected to the source of grace, and that source of grace helps us getting um, those sort of uh, spiritual connectedness in a more specific manner. Mm -hmm. Prophet Muhammad is the mediator of grace for all forms of objects, and you know. And explaining the intercession that we ex Exactly. Seek. So, uh, and, and, this, and this demonstrates that when we talk about the status of prophet, mm -hmm. not just the personality in terms of, you know, his life or something, mm -hmm. the status, ph philosophical status of prophet, we can see that the status ontologically means in terms of existential aspect and manifestation has mm -hmm. got uh, that sort of hierarchical superseding uh, preference. Mm -hmm. Preference not in terms of what we talk about in the world of the materialism, materialism but in the, in, in, the, in the sense of the um, ontological preference, mm -hmm. in the sense of the um, grace and its manifestation. And therefore, the first light was created by uh, God uh, in the manifestation of the light of prophet. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it has implications in terms of existential implications. Uh, the interesting point, as you were just mentioning, is that when we talk about profit and grace and existence, mm -hmm. we can see that all of them are the demonstration of love. So through a sort of connectedness to profit, you know, either in words or deeds, mm -hmm. or combination of both, which is going to be the impeccable consummate manifestation of a true follower, is going to help people provide themselves and people around themselves with love. So. Um, I can say something to you that um, uh, may, may need a little bit of uh, explanation in its um, uh, process of psychological implication is that when you look at all these theories of love and uh, psychological aspects and explanation of love, mm -hmm. you can see that uh, Prophet, Muhammad's, Prophet Muhammad's manifestation of love stands at the top of the list mm -hmm. because it stands and it starts with the true love. Mm -hmm. It starts with a real... Uh, manifestation of love. It starts with the preamble of love. It starts with uh, the fact that everybody needs to be loved. This is just the lower case. Mm -hmm. But it starts with uh, a great introduction that the existence in all its uh, consummate quintessential forms mm -hmm. of operation is indeed in dire need of that love. So it nourishes you know, everybody. So Prophet Muhammad's uh, recollection, that's why we say in Salawat, helps us understand mm -hmm. and facilitate that process. And uh, when you say salawat, for example, you know, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, is the manifestation of that connectedness in terms of the ontology of, uh, you know, the existence. So when you, mm -hmm. when you uh, recite any salawat or something, you acknowledge and ascertain that uh, through your own existence, you are in dire need of, you know, getting connected to a more mm -hmm. A phenomenal to a more uh, powerful to stronger source of connectedness. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see a car or something that is moving, that car could be so big like a truck or something, mm -hmm. but it is going to be moving based on an engine, and that engine is the one that is going to give that car stamina okay. and power. Mm -hmm. So we are, in, in terms of the essential ontological aspects, uh, you know, fraught with in, uh, you know, deficiencies, inadequacies, shortages on all of them, and Salawat helps us get that sort of connectedness. connectedness. And deep down the layer, it also helps us understand how we can uh, follow and we can, you know, abide by those manifestations in our own practice, in our mm -hmm. own existence. And all those layers are composed of love. Mm -hmm. So uh, through your words, through your saying, all of them is the manifestation of love. So Prophet Muhammad is so the greatest the manifestation. Um, from the source, he's the ultimate being that's been given the ultimate. Yeah. I guess making him the epitome of love. So it, it, it pours so. itself into 
the epitome, the crystallization of love in people's hearts and people's minds. And imagine in a hypothetical situation, which is the greatest ideal situation for a real Islamic society, mm -hmm. that people have got that sense of love. So people who accuse Islam of any sort of terrorism or something, if they understand mm -hmm. the deep down, not from the, um, the ones that pretend that they belong to Islam, right. the but they Islam. are extremists that have got nothing to do with Islam or something, the true, pristine, genuine form of Islam is associated with peace and love. Mm -hmm. And once you understand that, you can see that the, uh, in, a, in an ideal Islamic society, in an ideal Islamic yeah, community, like you could always them. have people that are offering love to one another. They just raise the chalice of love. They share, you know, the you know the aspects of love mm -hmm. in their interpersonal and interpersonal communication. Deep down their houses, deep down their offices, deep down their organizations, they always have this manifestation of love. Mm -hmm. So imagine uh, if people what always a beautiful have society, that, a utopia, you know, right? <laughs> I mean, this uh, they are characterized by the um, the panacea of love, inspired by Prophet Muhammad. They would mm -hmm. never see any sort of frowning or sulky or something because, because Prophet Muhammad himself points out that the greatest manifestation of uh, a believer is going to be the manifestation of love and, and kindness towards people and therefore uh, there is another hadith that if you just wake up and people around you are not uh, sort of um, um, you know experiencing that sense of comfort or something you need to take it up on yourself to go and provide them with that sense of love, either in material sense, if you've mm -hmm. got a, any sort of shortage or something, you've got to go and take care of that. Or if you can, sometimes you've got a neighbor, for example, who's down in the dumps out of sorts, and you can just go and mm -hmm. drop in and say hello or something, and then so you can give that <laughs> sense of powerful, positive form of love. So love is going to be continuously, incessantly, uh, flowing in every single corner of people's life based on the inspiration of Prophet Muhammad. And Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, who is also uh, the, you connected know, to this yeah, whole thing. connected to this um, topic and everything, he is also the manifestation of love in terms of, you can look at his behavior, his conversation. Can I stop you? I'm Imam Jafar Sadiq, we'll continue him sure. after, we'll listen to our story, and then of course, then yeah. we want to expand on it, be a waste to kind of cut sure. you off there. So we'll be back. The Crow and the Peacock. Once upon a time, a crow was flying in the sky when it saw a beautiful bird. The crow, which was happy to see the stranger bird, said, Oh, pretty bird, who are you? And what are you doing here? The bird said, I am a peacock. I live in far-off forests of India. I came here a couple of days ago. It is a very beautiful forest. The crow asked, Where is your nest? The peacock pointed to a very tall tree and said, my nest is there, and my nestlings are in the nest. The crow also pointed to a pine tree and said, and my nestlings are there. I've come here to bring them something to eat. The peacock said, how good. I wish we lived in the same place. I wish we were friends who accompany each other everywhere. The crow said, how is it possible that a bird such as me live near a beautiful bird such as you? The peacock moved its wings and said, Don't say these words. If you like to live in the same nest with me, come with me right now. The crow didn't say anything else and went with the peacock. 
they went to the peacock's nest. The crow was surprised to see the peacock's large and beautiful nest. It was also astonished to see the peacock's pretty nestlings. The crow went to his nest and returned a couple of times until he could bring all its nestlings to the peacock's nest. The peacock's nestlings and the crow's nestlings were happy to see each other. The crow asked, what should we do now? The peacock said, I've got a little food in my nest. Give them to the nestlings while I go to fetch some more food. We shouldn't leave the nest alone. One of us should stay in the nest. The crow said, okay. When you're back, it'll be my turn to go and seek for food. Now tell me which group of nestlings should I feed first? The peacock smiled and said, it's up to you. Feed whichever you like. The crow said, but I don't know what to do. The peacock smiled and said, you should decide yourself. Feed the prettier nestlings first. The crow said, okay, now I know what to do. You can go. The peacock flew away from the nest to go to the forest to find some more food. The nestlings played for a while until they became tired and hungry. Then they asked the crow to feed them. The crow said loudly, keep quiet. I can't feed all nestlings at the same time. I should find the prettier ones. Then it looked at its own nestlings and peacock's nestlings for a while. Then it cut the fruit which was in the nest and gave them to its own nestlings. The peacock's nestlings, which didn't understand what was going on, watched the other nestlings eat their food. They were confused, but they didn't say anything. However, as soon as their mother came back, they started to make loud noises. The peacock asked, What's the matter? Why are you making so much noise? Our guests will leave if you keep making such noise. The crow said, It is understandable why they make noise. They haven't eaten anything. Why? Haven't you fed my nestlings? No. You told me to feed the prettier nestlings. And I fed my own nestlings because for a crow, there is no one prettier than its own offsprings. This proverb is used about the people who think that whatever they have is the best one, although it doesn't seem beautiful. Welcome back to the program. Uh, well, if you've just tuned in, we're speaking about the psychology of love uh, here with uh, Dr. Fatemi. And uh, before the break, we were speaking about um, love and the prophet being the epitome of love. And then we were going on to Mom Jafar Sadaq, alayhi salam. So let's touch on that and then uh, kind of intertwine it with um, some other questions as to how we can uh, become part of that whole circle of love and how we can give and offer that love to. So a little bit about Imam Jafar Sadaq, and then we'll take it from there. Yeah, well, um, I mean, uh, in line with your interesting question, I think uh, what we can do is we can abide by uh, one of the prescriptive modes of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, indicating that if you want to be a true uh, follower in terms of your performance, your deeds, your action or something, you've got to take a leaf out of our book. Mm -hmm. And taking a leaf out of our book demonstrates that uh, when you are communicating with people in any form of interaction that you have, whether micro or uh, macro interaction or something, mm -hmm. you need to take it upon yourself to ask this question. That are you going to provide that person with a positive um, acid of feeling or are you mm -hmm. going to sort of be depreciating, condescending, putting them down, downgrading? Because those are going to be destructive in terms of self-esteem, self-confidence, um, emotional management and all of them. Going back to the um, expression, if you don't have anything nice to say, nice to say, don't say anything at all. Yeah, I think a lot or, of us need to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And abide um, by that. also, even if you haven't got anything to say, you can just perform something. You see that nonverbal behavior, nonverbal communication is the manifestation of all these feelings because they're spontaneous. They demonstrate an expression of you in every single moment. Mm -hmm. So if you're infused with love, if you're experiencing phenomenologically the power of love. If you're overwhelmed by that fragrance of uh, 
uh, Prophet Muhammad's love in its ontological manifestation, mm -hmm. you would always, even in a single um, encounter, in a short conversation, in a sort of interaction with people, no matter how small or big mm -hmm. your words might be, you demonstrate that sense of openness, that sense of flexibility. Mm -hmm. And you see what the, uh, the greatest manifestation of this love, as you just uh, pointed out with your good question, is that you begin with forgiveness. You mm -hmm. begin with um, that sort of positive approach towards everybody. Mistake is a part of life. People make mistakes. You make mistakes. So mm -hmm. you forgive yourself and you forgive people around yourself. And you see that when you experience that forgiveness, mm -hmm. you know, you can see, you can experience that phenomenological expansion, that ontological expansion, the sense that doors are going to be open, you know, doors are not going to be shut down. When you are devoid of forgiveness, when you're always fraught with this back and forth recursive program of, well, I'm going to do this because of this rancor, I'm mm -hmm. going to do this because of this animosity, I'm going to do this because of that. Your central command of mind, your central command of uh, uh, psychological experiences is going to be overwhelmed by that tenacity, by that mm -hmm. sort of tension stricken, tension driven form. Probably leaving no room know, for love. Exactly, and therefore it is strength, going to give you that sense of abandonment inside yourself. Mm -hmm. You just turn, in, turn yourself into a barren land without love. So the manifestation of Prophet Muhammad's love is that you just open up all these doors and mm -hmm. through that openness you experience the fragrance of the open air, the oxygen mm -hmm. of compassion, the oxygen of uh, you know, benevolence, mm -hmm. the psychological just, air of flexibility all around you, and therefore you can breathe in and breathe out through that flexible, uh, open, benevolent, mm -hmm. munificent form of manifestation. I think it's also, I mean, the way, the beautiful words and how you're describing it, for a lot of us, uh, the people who are really uh, caught up in that strife, that inner struggle of hate and revenge and so on and so forth, um, if you really look at the big picture and uh, you realize if you take in this love and you get that deep, uh, you know, that breath of fresh air and that, it's, it's, I think ultimately, even for you yourself, you become happy and you're offering people love and you're loving yourself and loving others. It's just, it's how you attain that ultimate peace and tranquility within also. So it's a win-win situation. It's you not can only say that again because when you are, when you're overwhelmed by the tenacity of animosity, the tenacity of uh, grudge and spite and rancor and all of them, you would just suffer from those excruciatingly painful experiences yourself more than anybody else because your mind is going to be sort of controlled by the flux of that mm -hmm. animosity. And, uh, you know, you go home, for example, you watch a program, you have that hate right in front of you, you're going to have some dish, for example, to enjoy. The first bite that you put in your mouth, you just come up with this uh, image of spite or rancor or something. Mm -hmm. You're going to read a newspaper the image is going to pop up. So mm -hmm. every situation is going to be inextricably, ineluctably, mm -hmm. and unquestionably tied to that sense of hatred, you spite, and, you know, and therefore you could be just um, uh, deteriorating yourself. Mm -hmm. So when you take it up on yourself and you say, well, and, and this is one of the manifestations of Prophet Muhammad's um, anniversary, the birth anniversary of Prophet Muhammad that mm -hmm. is going to be promising for everybody that you just go and do your prayer and try to forgive. Forgive yourself oh, first and then forgive people around yourself because then you're going to be emancipating yourself from all these hacktie, you know, hacktie's manacles of slavery mm -hmm. that you got yourself into and then you experience that sense of culmination of affection and love mm -hmm. as you experience the sense of connectedness to Prophet Muhammad. Beautifully put. Okay, so we'll go take a break. When we come back, it's time for From Here and There. Welcome back. Well, now it's time for From Here and There with my colleague. And today, instead of uh, Mr. Vapaju, we have uh, Muhammad Zafar Hadikia. Let's see what he has for us today. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Here and There. Let me first congratulate you on this uh, joyous occasion, the birth anniversary of Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him and his progeny. To you, my Muslim brother or sister, 
or any pro uh, monotheist watching this program. Well, let's start with the UK where Muslims mark uh, the uh, anniversary, sorry, the, uh, yes, the Unity Week with Love Muhammad event. It was the sound of the Holy Quran. You know, all Muslims believe uh, the book to be the words of God revealed to Prophet Muhammad that actually this event began with. At a time when division between Muslims is being stoked, organizers actually hoped it would be a reminder of the pillars that unite all Muslims. The Prophet of Mercy Conference, an annual event that coincides with the anniversary of the birth of Prophet Muhammad and the start of the Unity Week was organized by the World Forum for Proximity of Islamic Schools of Thought. Muslims from different cultures and sects attending uh, the, the event, uh, actually a reflection of the diverse Muslim community in the UK, actually um, convened and talked on different issues regarding the main topic. Uh, also present were community leaders and politicians. In recent years, you know, it sometimes seems that the message of peace and unity has been lost. Is that correct that this initiative aims to mend? Everyone felicitates uh, Muslim nations on birth anniversary of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, Iran's first vice president, Ishaq Jahangiri, has congratulated his Muslim uh, counterparts on the birth anniversary of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. In his messages, Jahangiri expressed hope that those people facing various types of cries would resort to the lofty teachings of Islam and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and would move on the road to sympathy, compassion, peace prosperity and tranquility. Hadith is the second source of Islam after the Holy Quran. You know, it's that great significance uh, in the field of uh, actually demonstrating the divine knowledge and religious laws of Islam, and which uh, leads to human perfection. The Holy Prophet's words are attached to the divine revelation because uh, it's considered one of the two weighty things that the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, has promised his nation of deliverance from straying off the straight path if they adhere to them. As you can see here, uh, in view of the, this fact, we are grateful uh, to the scholars and narrators who have maintained, saved, and recorded the prophetic words and then transferred them to the next generations until they reached up soundly. The book of Nahjul Fasaha is considered one of the most magnificent uh, encyclopedias that comprise uh, this great heritage of Islam. Its Persian version has been compiled and uh, arranged in a wonderful way by Mr. Ghulam Hussain uh, Majidi Hansari, who has really exerted praiseworthy efforts in presenting the book, in such a handsome way, of course. The English version of the book is also arranged in an alphabetic order and contains an index showing the major topics of these honorable maxims of the Holy Prophet. I hope you're going to benefit uh, this book's pearls and the superb maxims of the Holy Prophet. May Allah uh, bless him and his household. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching, and back to me is Akju. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Fahadikya. Uh, now it's time for a clip, and don't go away after a clip. We'll continue our discussion about love.
آشقانه یا شغان دل را چرا غانی کنی ای می فروشان شهر را انگور مهمانی کنی معشوق من بکشوده در روی گدای خانش تا سرکشم من جرعی از ساغر و پیمانش باز مست و رقص است و تره مطرب نوایی ساز کن در مقدم او بهترین تصنیف را باز کن مجنون بوی لیلی هم در کوی او جایم کنی همچون غلام خانش زنجیر در پایم کنی ای آشغان ای آشغان دل را چراغانی کنی ای می فروشان شهر را انگور مهمانی کنی معشوق من بکشوده در روی گدای خانش تا سرکشم من جر ای از ساغر و پیمانه Welcome back to the program. Well, after those uh, breathtaking scenes, I think uh, we have a lot of love for the um, creation and the world itself. So uh, let's go back to, we don't have too much time left, unfortunately, but just to end off, um, Dr. Fatima, we want that love. Many of us, we want to have that love. We want to be able to give that love. Uh, how can we increase that? Um, what are some things that we can do to increase that love in our relationships? Um, yeah, I mean, this is going to be an inspiring question for a lot of people. Um, Behavior is the person uh, is the function of the person and the environment. Mm -hmm. So you, we got to work on two sides at least. One is the person, which is going to be associated with um, working on this, which is going to be associated with um, lots of things in terms of your internal assets. Mm -hmm. What we can do, for example, is instead of a look on deficiencies, on shortages, on what you have, on what you do not have, on what is missing, you can concentrate and marshal your forces on what you have. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about what is instead of what is missing, you would just see yourself in a different mode. Mm -hmm. You would see yourself blossoming. You would see yourself uh, fully functioning. So this is love for yourself? Um, yeah. Or this is uh, going to help you? This is going to help you as well because um, if you, for example, if you're in your home and you always focus on what is missing in your life, you don't have this, you don't have that, Therefore, your feelings, mm -hmm. you know, whether your emotional or physical feelings, are going to be associated with some sort of tension or something. Mm -hmm. But at least you can ask yourself, what went well in my life today? What is it that I had, for example? Maybe I just had a good conversation with somebody. Maybe I read, you know, from the smallest things in the world mm -hmm. to other things that you could be oblivious to. You can begin with what you have instead of what you don't have. And therefore, this is going to give rise to some secondary um, factor, which is going to be coupled with thankfulness and gratitude. Mm -hmm. You're going to be thankful towards people around yourself. You're going to express your gratitude. And always this gratitude as you have in your Friday, you know, in your prayer, mm -hmm. right after prayer you say Tasbiyata has a Zahra, which is going to be associated well with Alhamdulillah, you know, you you just express your gratitude, your mm -hmm. thankfulness to God, which is going to be manifestation of love. Because if your mind, if your psychological dynamic mechanisms you know is always associated with a sense of connectedness with a sense of instead of focusing on what is missing mm -hmm. you focus on what you have this is going to be the, the uh, manifestation of grace this is going to help you open up your eyes and ears and focus on things around yourself in a positive manner mm -hmm. your perspective counts your perspective makes a difference so a shift of perspective can you know develop a sense of love Along with these personal factors, you can always focus on the environmental factors. If you're always rubbing elbows with people around yourself or always whining and complaining and you know, they always pour into your hearts and minds some sort of deficiency or negativity, mm -hmm. you would just, at the end of the day, the lesson that you take is, well, I don't have the following, I should have had those, I wish I had, and therefore, people around yourself, environmental factors, ecological factors, would have a tremendous positive or negative impact in terms of developmental aspect of life. Uh, so first, the primary one that we're focused on is focusing on is internally, to internally uh, build yourself so as th to be optimistic, to be grateful, to have that uh, beauty within and to appreciate what you have to look, yeah. I guess. And, and from, a, from and an optimistic perspective, from we do not want to suggest that you just go and 
have a naive, frivolous mm -hmm. sort of things there. If your car conks out, you just get out of the car and say, well, the car hasn't conked out. Everything is going, <laughs> you know, it, it's a manifestation of instead of getting entangled by the intense feelings and emotions, you would always change them into a more appropriate form of emotion. You can see Prophet Muhammad himself uh, was uh, the manifestation of, um, you know, experiencing lots of hardship, lots of ups and downs, but the response again came from the power of love. Mm -hmm. You know, people instead of welcoming Prophet right at the beginning of his, in his ordainment, they tried to put, uh, put him down, they tried to uh, make fun of him or something, but the response was not a retaliatory response. The response was, you know, an open welcoming approach. And that gives us an example that you can always take a leaf out of Prophet's book and that example is that you can always try to come up with peaceful, ironic, amicable, amiable responses. And those responses are going to enlighten your environment, are going to festoon your climatic conditions, are going to beautify uh, your communication with people around yourself. So when you have that cold winter of uh, indifference, when you have that sense of animosity, when you have that sense of tension in your relationship, when you have that sort of um, um, accumulation of all those negative factors, then you just come up with this sense of grace from Prophet Muhammad and you say, well, I'm going to take it upon myself to let the love flow in every single aspect of my interaction with people around myself. Mm -hmm. So I think basically the takeaway is, um, again, at the beginning we were saying to be connected, that connectedness, and to, to take from Prophet Muhammad what got that love that he's instilled in him. And um, so we need to start from within and obviously follow. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Fatimi, for being with us and uh, to dear viewers for inviting us into your home. Don't forget, uh, go on our website, sahartv.ir, and uh, drop us a line and email. We'd appreciate your comments. Purehome at sahartv.ir is our email. Until next time, goodbye and God bless. Thank you.